Hi, this is Jason with WP GraphQL, and I want to show you a feature called Node by URI. And this is an entry point into WP GraphQL where you can pass a path to a WordPress resource or a URI, uh, and in response, you will get the node that is represented by that path. So it could be a page, it could be a post, it could be a custom post type, it could be a, a category archive or content type or whatever, or a you know term or whatever it might be. So any anything um, in WordPress can be returned by this. So what I mean by that, when we pass a URL into a WordPress site, uh, WordPress knows how to return the specific thing. So if I'm on the, the default, just like home URL, like my site slash uh, forward slash, um, WordPress knows what to return. So if I open up this uh, admin or the debug tools, we can see that this is returning home, right? Um, and so this is going to be this going to be the home page, right? Um, and then I can click something like about, and we can see that WordPress is returning page, page template default, um, right? So it it knows that this thing is a page, and it's going to return the specific template for this. Um, I can click on any of these pages, and if we if we look in here, we can keep seeing that, okay, this returning a page. I can click on a category. We can see this is going to return an archive of, of category in that specific category, that specific category ID, um, and so on and so forth. And then we can click on a post, and we can also see that this is returning post template, uh, single, single post. It knows the post ID, um, these, these kinds of things, right? Um, so yeah, so what I want to show is how we can um, use a URL from WordPress to get data for that thing in GraphQL. So I'm going to split my screen so that we have WordPress on one side and GraphQL on the other side. So this, um, I'm looking at demo.wpgraphql.com and I'm logged into demo.wpgraphql.com on the left side. And I'm looking at the tool called Graphical. Uh, which is just an IDE that ships with WP GraphQL. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna write a quick query. So I'm gonna say query, and we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna say uh, node by URI, and this name can be anything you want it to be. Um, and then we're gonna give it a variable. You can also name the variable anything you want. It starts with a dollar sign, and then you can name it anything you want. And we have to tell it what type of input to expect. And uh, so in our case, we're going to ex expect a string, which is going to be the, the path to the resource. And then we're going to write our query. So we're going to say node by URI. And that accepts one argument, which is URI. And we're going to set it up to accept our variable. And in response, I'm going to simply ask for type name. And so here we can see the variables I already had entered is URI forward slash. So if I execute this, um, we can see that, okay, the the homepage is gonna return a content type. So if I'm on the homepage here, WordPress is actually also returning a content type. It's actually returning the, the post content type uh, because it's an archive. It's an archive of posts. So we can see that it's returning a list of posts. And so if I was gonna recreate this in uh, headless WordPress with GraphQL, I would need uh, what information would I need? I would need to one know that it's an archive or or the post archive, um, and then I would need a list of posts. So we can see it's returning these posts here, right? And um, so I can then ask for. So we can say using what's called a a fragment. We can say on content type, and then we can start asking for things like we can ask for the name. But then we can also ask for the content nodes, right? Um, so what this is going to do, it's going to give us a list of these nodes, these content nodes. Um, so we can ask for ID. We can ask for, we can say on node. Well, let's say post. We'll say on post. And we can say title because that will give us the title. Um, then we can ask for the content. We can ask for the content. And then we can ask for this data. We can say author. And we need that author's node. And we need the author's, let's do probably ID and name and avatar URL. 
and then we need so the next we show the comp, uh, categories so we can also ask for the categories of the posts and on those nodes we want the name and then okay so that's it uh, oh and then the date we also want the date of the post right so this is the information we need to rebuild this page so there is one one caveat here so this is showing sticky post here um wp graphql is not going to show that uh out of the box you're going to have to to specify when you want to use a sticky post um but it will show the rest so we can see the non-sticky post is that's the sticky post in wordpress but we can see tiled gallery is coming for the ride here right and then i can collapse that we should have twitter embeds yep and then we should have featured image right so these are all just dummy posts but we can see that we can pass the url or the the home uri and get enough information to recreate this page right so now if i navigate to a different page like about and paste this in as our input and click execute we'll see oh okay it, i'm asking for this information only if the node is a content type well it turns out at the url uh, or the path about this is not a content type this is a page we can look at our uh our body class and see that wordpress is returning a page and a page template default page id 1086 right so this is a page and wp graphql is smart enough to know that um so what i'm going to do i'm actually going to take this uh what we just wrote and i'm going to turn that into a fragment so i'm going to say we'll paste it down here and i'm going to give it a i'm going to turn it into a named fragment we're going to say fragment content type on content type and i'm going to put it back up here we're going to say content type prettify that so now i can still execute this if i come back to home uh, i can still execute that and we get our content type if i come back and put in about uh, we are going to get our page and so i'm going to do the same thing we did here i want to say page uh, as our fragment and then i'm going to create a new fragment here i'm going to say fragment page on page so we know it's the type page and so what do we want to ask for about a page well if we were going to recreate this page we would want uh the title right so if i execute this we should get the title so about we want the content right so we can see this html content is what matches here and then uh, maybe we want the comments too we can say um, comment count uh, comments nodes id title uh, let's see or not title um, author node name and what else the content right so we can get the comments so right now it's going to show nothing but if if i go test comment if i go add a comment we'll see test comment and then i can execute this again and we will have enough information to uh to, to render this ui as well so maybe uh we're also getting on that comment we're also getting the date and we get the avatar uh, so we could say on user avatar URL. So if it turns out the author is a user, which in this case it was, it was a logged in user, we can get the avatar URL. So we, we have enough information now to rebuild this UI. So we can enter the page URL, right? We can enter this URL in WP GraphQL and have enough information returned to us to recreate this page. So now we can go into something else like categories, right? So this is a category in WordPress. If we open this up, we will see that this is a category archive. Uh, so we can see archive category, what category, what category ID it is. So if we were gonna recreate this, um, let me put this into our variable input here and execute and we'll see node by URI knows that this is a category, but we're not asking for anything if it's a category. So let's change that say fragment category on category and add that here and if we were going to rebuild this page we would want the name so we can ask for the name of the category we would want the description 
description. So if I execute this now, we can see we get the name, alignment, um, and we get the description, post in this category, right? So I can, I can enter this URL into GraphQL, GraphQL can give me the data I need back. And now what's happening here, this image alignment, this is a post. So this is now, it's a list of posts that exist in this alignment category. So any of these posts we're gonna see are part of the alignment category, right? So we can see, what is it, three posts. So we have image alignment, we have text alignment, and we have many categories, right? So if we're gonna rebuild this page, we would also want to ask for posts. And on those posts, we want the nodes, we probably want the ID, we'd want the title, we want the content in this case, um, or it might be the excerpt, however you wanted to, to style your thing. We would want the link to it, or we could also maybe do a relative and ask for the URI. Um, and then if we go down to the bottom of the post, we get the author, and we want the author's name, we want the author's avatar URL, what else? And then we want the date. Uh, we want the date of the post. So that's going to be here. And we also want, these are the links to the categories. So for that post, we could say we want categories, nodes, name, and URI. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, we also might want the comment count. Comment count. I think, I think if there were comments here, it might show the comment count, maybe, um, maybe not, but yeah, so we can ask for it anyway. Um, so now I can execute this, and if it's a category, we now have enough information to rebuild this page, right? We have the title of the category, we have the description of the category, we have uh, the list of posts that belong to this category, we get the post ID, we get the title, we get the content, um, and then if we go down here, we have the link to it, uh, or the relative link, the URI. We have the author's name, we have the author's avatar, right? So we have enough information here to rebuild what we're seeing in WordPress. Uh, we have the date, um, we'll, you'd format that on the client. Um, we have the comment count if it had comments. Um, and then we have the categories that we can output in this list with their URIs. Um, or we could we could do link as well. We could do the full link if we wanted, and we would get that right. I could scroll down and we'll get the the full link right. Um, if you're doing headless, sometimes the relative link or the URI makes sense. So it just depends on what you're doing. Um, so yeah, I now have enough information to rebuild this page right. Um, so some pretty pretty cool stuff, um, and. Yeah, so we've, we've covered pages, categories, archives, um, and the home. Um, yeah, so, so the node by URI query um, is super powerful, lets you get to the specific node that any URI represents. And uh, yeah, very, very helpful. Um, great way to debug things, great way to build headless UIs. Uh, and what's cool with the fragments is, is you can have like a template router if you wanted to. That was a component that fetched the thing by node and then determined what type of thing it is and passed the data down to that to render it. So you could have a specific component for rendering categories or a specific component for rendering pages or a specific component for rendering archives. Um, whatever, whatever you need to do. Uh, yeah, so I hope this is helpful and I hope you get something out of this and I look forward to seeing what people create with this feature of WP GraphQL. Thank you.